It was an amazing morning there by the Sea of Galilee. John calls it the Sea of Tiberias, but it's the same place. Simon Peter's old stomping and fishing grounds. The place where Jesus found him when it all began in happier days. Peter has come back to these familiar surroundings to get away from everything that happened in Jerusalem. Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. And he was raised from the dead there. But before all that, Peter had promised Jesus proudly and publicly that he would stick with him. Stand up for him. No matter what. And then Peter denied Jesus three times publicly. Gone was the pride driven out by cowardice and shame. Peter did not betray his Lord into the hands of his enemies, but he did desert Jesus when the die was cast and danger loomed large. And so, having failed his Lord, Peter came back home and decided to go fishing. He was going back to that other business he had left when he took up with Jesus. I am going fishing, Peter said, back to the boats and nets and the Sea of Galilee, back to the simple life I know and understand and work I can do without breaking my word. I am going to be a fisher of fish. Let somebody else be a fisher of men. And as you heard, Peter spent a long, dark night doing what he wanted to do. And all he had to show for it was an empty net and a sleepless night. He didn't do so well his first night out, but that and everything else is about to change. As the light of morning dawns, there is a man standing on the shore. The man is Jesus, of course, the risen Lord. And although seeing Jesus there is better than seeing him hanging on a cross or bundled up and buried, there is still the business of Peter's behavior on the night our Lord was betrayed. And there is Jesus, raised from the dead and standing on the shore, waiting to ask Peter a question that will break Peter's heart to hear. Three times, Peter failed Jesus that night in Jerusalem. And now, three times, Jesus will question Peter about his love. It is a painful question for Peter to hear Jesus ask him even once. But Jesus doesn't ask it just once. He keeps asking it. And every time he does, it hurts more. But the question must be asked. If Peter is to get past his failure... It must be asked if Peter is not to be allowed to slip into a life of moral mediocrity and spiritual malaise. It must be asked. Because the answer Peter will give Jesus will be the basis for the commission that Jesus intends to give Peter. Jesus tells Peter where to fish. Jesus fixes Peter breakfast. And then Jesus asks him, Do you love me more than these? What do you say when you have already failed your dearest friend? What do you say when your actions have already proven your words to be hollow? Simon Son of John, do you love me more than these? At one time, Peter thought he did, knew he did. 
And he said so. But what can he say now? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. But Jesus keeps asking the question. Simon, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you, Peter pleads. But Jesus keeps asking the question. Do you love me? And in agony, Peter answers Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And what Peter is also saying, praying in his words and tone, in his eyes and heart is, please don't ask me again. And Jesus relents. He will not ask Peter this question again. He will not need to. Jesus does not ask the question unless your behavior leaves the answer in doubt. Do you love me? I can't tell by what you're doing. Loving Jesus is not finally how you feel about him. It's about what you do because you love him. It's about what your love for him drives you to do. What it will not let you not do. And that is why Jesus responds to each of Peter's answers with an answer of his own. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Follow me. Do you love me? Do what I give you to do. Jesus will not ask Peter this question again, but that does not mean he has stopped asking it. It is the question Jesus keeps asking, just not to Peter. Of course, if the question were just for Peter, John would not have bothered to tell us about it. It is the question Jesus asked Peter and keeps asking every disciple like Peter. Is your story that different from Peter's? Love experienced, power and wisdom observed, a call to service heard and accepted, then impulsive promises of faithfulness, and all too soon a heartbreaking failure to keep those promises. Have you failed your loving Lord? Have you broken your promise of loyalty in the words you have spoken or the deeds you have done or left undone? Even now, even to you, Jesus will come and ask the question, do you love me? Are you ashamed of your failures, your functional denials of your brave affirmations of faith and loyalty? What can I tell him after what I've done? Jesus knows me. He knows when I have failed him. Yes. And he asks you the same question he asked Peter. Do you love me? And he will keep asking it until he gets the answer from you that he got from Peter. It is an agonizing question for Jesus to put to you. You feel bad enough as it is, but there's more to this question than you think. Out of the pain of the confrontation of your failure, the agonizing and unavoidable admission of weakness and fear and desertion of Christian duty comes something you would not expect and could not imagine. Redemption and reconciliation and restoration. Do you love me? Jesus asks you. And when you say, yes, you know that I love you. You know what he's going to tell you to do. If you love me, 
feed my lambs. If you love me, tend my sheep. In other words, if you love me, you are qualified to do what I want you to do. And there's more. Jesus keeps asking the question because within the question is a great and glorious implication. What is his message? Jesus would not ask you if you love him unless he still loves you. Do you love me? I still love you. After what you did, despite what you did, I still love you. And the love of Jesus for you is not limited to how he feels about you. The love of Jesus has always been about what he did for you. And what he is doing for you. And what he will do for you. Jesus loves you. And so he feeds you. And tends to you as one of his beloved sheep. And because of that, he asks you the question again, do you love me? Jesus says, feed and tend my sheep because you love me. And will not Jesus also and at the same time be feeding and tending the same sheep? He commands you to feed and tend. Jesus will be doing what he does for his sheep through you, just as he did through Peter. It's as though Jesus says, your failure to be faithful to me calls your love into question, but because you have reaffirmed your love for me, I give you this mission. It turns out that Jesus keeps asking the question not to punish our failures as his disciples, but to redeem us from those failures and to reward our love for him with the opportunity to demonstrate that love in ways that are important to him. Of course, not everyone has denied Jesus in so flagrant a way as Peter did in Jerusalem. It's much more common to just rearrange your priorities as Peter does in Galilee. Peter had been completely immersed in Jesus and his work for quite a while. Now Peter feels like it's time to focus on something else beside Jesus. When he says he's going fishing... Peter is, in essence, announcing he's done with the Jesus business. Peter thought the Jesus first and only phase of his life was over, when in fact, it had hardly begun. Everything that had gone before had just been preparation. Our Lord will keep on asking the question until, until he gets the answer he wants. Do you love me? If you love me, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, take care of those I love. Amen.